Welcome to Conversations in Integrated Medicine and in this module I'm going to start to talk about metabolic syndrome otherwise known as Syndrome X now increasingly recognized as Syndrome X, Y and Z. Um, this terminology eh, is not really confusing. Metabolic syndrome is a condition that has been forgotten despite the fact that it's the number one health challenge facing industrialized communities and it's emerging rapidly in third world countries. So what is Syndrome X? Uh, what is Metabolic Syndrome? And basically it's every day after dinner conversation, especially in America, <clears throat> it's a conversation about our waistlines, uh, associated with changes in our blood cholesterol, associated with uh, obviously insulin resistance as the underlying factor, and sometimes but variably associated with elevated blood pressure, or perhaps some evidence of altered glucose tolerance. So let's look at this uh, from the point of view of simplistic idea. When I say every day after dinner conversation, it's things like, oh, no more cake, my waistline, too much sugar in my diet, Uncle Tom's got diabetes, and Bertha's blood pressure is on the brink, and everybody in the family was offered a cholesterol-lowering drug after the age of 40 years. So here we have something that is so common and so accepted as part of aging in America or in industrialized communities, we have developed a dangerous complacency. And that's why I want to get into the definition and talk about this condition from the point of view of these four factors, namely overweight status, variably associated with altered blood cholesterol, especially high triglyceride levels, variably associated with high blood pressure, and variably but often undermined or underlinked by <clears throat> insulin resistance. Now people have asked, well, you know, these situations hang, hang out together and what you're talking about are primary cardiovascular risk factors. No doubt. So I'm going to give an oversimplified explanation of this complex and explain to you that this is something that I've tried to get across for many years <clears throat> in education to patients and other physicians. And I've tried to call it different terms. I've tried to use terms like jelly belly, the pot belly syndrome, the pot belly dinosaur phenomenon. And I'll explain why I've gone into that. But in essence, this is not a difficult diagnosis to make. In fact, it probably affects almost one in four of the population in America. That's 70 million Americans with metabolic syndrome to a varying degree. Clearly, one could see this metabolic disorder as pre-diabetes. But I want to explain that this disorder is associated with a litany a large number of other disorders to show us that really where we are at in human evolution is the development of an advanced lifestyle that's put us into a metabolic circumstance where if you like our body is not adapted to our new so-called advanced lifestyle which is characterized often by idleness excessive calorie intake and the wrong kind of diet among other things. There's no question that this is genetically determined to some degree. This condition of metabolic syndrome is particularly challenging in African American mature women and Hispanic mature women, but it's also common in Caucasian women, just not quite as common. So if you're looking at a middle-aged female between the age of 50 and 65, we can see from prevalent studies that more than 50% of women have metabolic syndrome. And I've talked about a phenomenon that I think is very important and I believe will come to the forefront of thinking uh, in the next few years.
I've described metabolic syndrome as loading a gun of disability and menopausal transition of pulling the trigger. I've gone further and said that perhaps in some circumstances conventional hormone replacement therapy were the bullets in the gun. But in essence I want to talk more about this relationship of metabolic syndrome to female health and it's part of a new book I've written on the natural management of menopause and PMS which is pending publication. So I've described the background here to Metabolic Syndrome X but I'd also like to indicate that Metabolic Syndrome X was renamed uh, as a prerogative that I took a few years ago, about five or six years ago. Why did I rename it? Well I renamed it because I wanted to jump the educational hurdle and explain the real implications of metabolic syndrome. And that's why I coined the term syndrome X, Y and Z. You could look at syndrome X with its four corners and look at obesity, blood pressure, cholesterol and insulin resistance. That makes a nice X. But let's look at the derivation of the Y and the Z. The Y and the Z represents coexisting conditions that are associated with this metabolic derangement of insulin resistance. And what we see in people with metabolic syndrome is really quite shocking. We see evidence often of abnormal glucose tolerance, not complete diabetes, but just elevation in fasting blood glucose around the 100 mark, 100 milligram percent mark. We see evidence of polycystic ovary syndrome, especially in young women. In fact, metabolic syndrome is the commonest cause of endocrine disorder in a premenopausal female. We see primary cardiovascular risk. We see an increased incidence of stroke. We see an increased incidence of Alzheimer's disease. We see an increased incidence of cancer, hyperinsulinemia, that occurs in metabolic syndrome is invariably associated with an increased risk of pancreatic, colon cancer and breast cancer. So we're starting to see now how this disorder links together in what I call the metabolic dinosaur or the pot belly syndrome. And really in simplistic terms metabolic syndrome X or syndrome X, Y and Z are all of the ugly consequences of the overweight or obesity epidemic. So looking at managing weight control in mature people without considering the management of metabolic syndrome is perhaps a form of mismanagement, even to some degree negligence. Now, when we look at interventions and we look at simplistic things like the low carbohydrate diet craze, Robert Atkins, a, a dear friend of mine, um, who is to be revered uh, for his lifetime work in complementary medicine, started to talk about low carb diets, but towards the end of his career, prior to his unfortunate death, he was very focused on metabolic syndrome. But reducing simple sugars by itself does not universally overcome insulin resistance. But certainly carbohydrate restriction is one step in the right direction in combating metabolic syndrome. We'll talk about management principles in more detail. So here's this litany of disorders, this metabolic complex, and this is where I got the terminology syndrome X, Y, and Z. The implications of metabolic syndrome for ill health are shockingly vast. And really we're looking at a pre-diabetic status here and the question is why doesn't everybody develop diabetes? Well there may be a day when a lot of us do develop type, type 2 diabetes but the issue is that metabolic syndrome has comorbidity associated disease that may kill individuals prior to the onset of full-blown type 2 diabetes. So again the variable combination and variable association of very serious challenging disease. This is really the conundrum, the complex of metabolic syndrome X, which in fact is something that's poorly diagnosed and mismanaged on occasion. Thank you for listening.